I ask myself very often what makes a person a business leader. Who are business leaders? People will tell you Steve Jobs was a business leader. Bill Gates is a business leader. But I ask myself if Bill Gates had to restart Microsoft, would he be as successful as he was? Jack Welch was a business leader, a superman. He was the manager of the century of the last century. Elon Musk is a business leader. He's a gifted, probably the most gifted storyteller today. So what do management gurus tell us about leaders? Professor Malik from the University of St. Gallen tells us top managers would have to be a crossbreed between ancient general, a Nobel Prize winner in physics and a television showmaster. Professor Benes, who was professor at the University of Southern California, told us today MBA programs are harshly criticized for failing to provide useful skills, adequately prepare leaders and teach standards of ethical behavior. And Professor Mintzberg, McGill University tells us how can management be a profession if the learning material of managers can't even be specified because a profession requires knowledge meant in a field of study or science and management is not a science. This is actually a problem for all business people. Okay, let's look what a leader is in the classic of the modern times. Let's look into Google. If you look for the word leader, you have 1.4 billion research results. Leadership around 1 billion research results. Okay, there's no help. Perhaps we find a clear definition in recent management literature. Definitely, I think Amazon will help us. Let's look for leadership. And what do we find? There are over 60,000 books that are referenced on leadership. And I personally think everybody who after 10 beers still can pronounce the word leadership is willing to write a book. Jack Welch, for example, wrote four books within three years with his wife, Susie Welch, and they are contradictory. I find a nice book, Leaders, from Warren Bennis. And Warren Bennis tells us, managers focus on systems. Leaders focus on people. Managers depend on control. Leaders inspire trust. Managers accept the status quo. Leaders challenging the status quo. Managers imitate and re-imitate. Leaders create new things. Is there perhaps help from the classical literature or on strategy by militarists? Tacitus tell us omnium consensu carpax imperii nisi imerasset. Everyone thought he was a leader until he took the lead. And the old Greeks tell us Panta rei, everything flows. This goes back to the Greek philosopher Heraclit. And he tells us, you can't step into the same river twice, for other waters are continuously flowing. Whoa, great ideas. Sun Tzu, or as the Chinese tell us, Sun Tzu, in his book of Art of War, tells us, these are the traits of a leader, wisdom, sincerity, goodwill, courage, and straightforwardness. He's even the first person to describe what a SWOT analysis is. Von Clausewitz, 
his book is probably one of the most read in literature, tells us a successful leader is the genius of strategy. He has the mind to see the dim light of truth and has the courage to follow that light. But there are some problems, he calls them frictions, which distinguish the real world from that on paper. Today we would say Murphy, Murphy's Law. There's a fog of uncertainty. Information is often contradictory and not correct. Human perception is irrational. You need as a leader a great inner strength and you have to decide and tell the others your decision and make them follow you. A former student of mine told me once a quote of Bruce Henderson. Bruce Henderson is the founder of Boston Consulting Group. And the quote is, biologists are better advisors for companies than economists. I'm both an economist and a biologist. And I'm definitely convinced our genes, our hormones and our experiences control our leadership behavior. Can we actually find leadership examples in nature? Okay, our management environment, this is what literature tells us, is about leadership, is about organization, is about teamwork and knowledge management. Let's look for examples. Leadership in the wolf pack. We have a clear hierarchy. We have loyalty relationships. All these data I'm presenting are out of game reserves. But I think a company is comparable to a game reserve because both things are enhanced. There are the alpha male sometimes accompanied by alpha females. They protect their beta males. The beta males make sure that the pack is run according to rules and hierarchy is exacted. The pack has to obey. Then they are supported by their leaders. If you don't obey, you will be expelled from the group. And if the beta males overshoot in their tasks and somebody in the pack is hurt, alphas calm down by seeking body contact to the hurt ones. And another important thing is, a better animal never ever inherits the lead wolf. Successors are selected from the pack. But a good thing is, better animals usually stay in their position. I think politicians should understand this. In Germany, for example, Helmut Kohl selected Wolfgang Schäuble as being the next chancellor. But the Christian Democrats voted him out and he lost to Angela Merkel. Angela Merkel she thought that Annegret kam karrenbauer we call them they are, uh, uh, her in Germany, AKK, would become the next chancellor. She had to resign after one and a half years. Internationally, Bill Clinton thought Al Gore would be his successor, a great successor. Al Gore lost the election in 2000 to George Bush, as we know. And in Great Britain, Tony Blair resigned in 2007 for Gordon Brown and Gordon Brown lost the election in 2010 to David Cameron and he lost about 92 seats. Incredible, absolutely incredible. Okay, leadership, organization. There's a wonderful example with the herrings. Even giant swans work perfectly synchronously. Locomotion, always parallel. Foraging small groups and danger, they have two possibilities when they are accepted. The explosion strategy go away or just swim around 
the danger. The rules of the herrings, a minimum distance to the neighbor, one third of a body length. The best would be one body length. You always orient yourself at your neighbors, swim towards the food, swim away from danger. Consequences, the system is simple and effective. Observations and experiments show us when there are artificial fishes used, each fish can take control of the whole swarm. However, be aware of that. One crazy fish as a leader, all fishes go crazy. What does this mean to us in a company? What is a swarm in a company? Group of equal type employees with definitely clear defined tasks. No ranks. Advantages? No organizational overhead, please focus on the task. It's always the swarm is only as good as its rules. And what makes good rules in a company? A few rules as, as few rules as possible. The rules should be clear, concrete and give guiding action, allowing room for interpretation Rules can improve through evolution. Try it out in your company by practice. Watch and change. Let the swarm change the rules and always keep an eye on the fulfillment of the tasks. Another teamwork group that is wonderful are dolphins. When they are hunting and joking, for example, they talk about it. They have before social relationships in mini teams, three to four dolphins. And when they hunt, they form temporary alliances with other teams, maximum groups about 15 dolphins, and they form strategic alliances with outsiders like seagulls. So lessons learned from dolphins Stay flexible in your company with mini teams. Form mini teams in a team. Limit the time of your teams. Give them challenging tasks and neglect any personal discrepancies. And the thing I like the best is knowledge meant of the bees. There's the beehive, there are the suppliers, for example, sunflower, and there's the environment. And the bee was outside and the bee comes back and gives a waggle dance. The waggle dance shows the direction of the food source by the angle to the position to the sun. It shows the distance to the food source by the speed of the dance and the yield of the food source due to frequency how often they dance. Isn't that incredible? Lessons learned from knowledge meant by bees. Bees are able to display multidimensional information about location of the food source. They give three-dimensional direction instruction on the vertical honeycomb surface easy and correctly. And my conclusion, con conclusion and lesson learned is Successful companies need directions through clear and um, unambiguous communication systems and convincing leaders. So manager and management consultants can learn from other nature. Strategy and the actions that are required must be easy to communicate, easy to understand by everyone, based as possible on as little data as possible, based on a common understanding and common values and strategies should be easy to implement. So Mother Major has quite a lot to tell us, us the managers. Thank you very much.